David Watts is European credit strategist at research firm Credit Sites. Joins me in the studio now. Thanks so much for coming in. So I just want to start by asking you, putting that, you hearing those comments there from Larry Fink in that interview, saying that you're going to have to restructure the banks before you restructure any one country. What do you think about that? Well, I think certainly that EU leaders, before they undertake any restructuring, they're going to have to consider the capital positions of the banks. Uh, whether or not that means you have to do a wholesale recapitalization is a bit uncertain, because clearly you can allow the banks to rebuild capital slowly, as long as you're prepared to kick the, uh, the can down the road, as, as people continuously refer to it. The problem with that, of course, is how far do you push it down the road, and to the extent what extent do you start to take out private sector debt and replace it with official sector debt? And how much harder does that make a restructuring when you finally have to undertake it? So, from what you're saying, it sounds like restructuring is inevitable and kicking the can down the road, that phrase we keep on hearing, won't necessarily make it any easier. I think most people are agreed that Greece is now very difficult to see it coming back uh, into the debt markets and becoming sustainable again without some form of restructuring. It's possible that if you provide mm. it with very, very low cost money for a very, very long period of time, let's say EFSF debt for 30 or 50 years, it's possible they won't need to do a restructuring. But I, I just don't think that that's very politically palatable at the moment. And it's more likely that, that come 2013, if the banking system is sufficiently recapitalized and if Spain is sufficiently able to stand on its own two feet, then you will look to try and do some form of restructuring. What about the contagion risk, the knock-on effects of a Greek restructuring for Spain, Italy, and could we actually see those risks start to manifest themselves in the markets before an actual restructuring for Greece? Well, that, that's obviously the problem with all of these comments that we keep hearing. As soon as you start hearing comments about a restructuring or even a reprofiling, it starts to undermine markets' confidence in, in the extent to which Spain or other countries with any kind of troubling debt issues are not going to be restructured. And so th they start to undermine their ability to borrow and, and push them towards the arms of the EFSF facility. Um, whether or not that's going to be resolved by 2013 will depend on the extent to which those countries can grow their way out of this. Now, unfortunately, because they've got a fixed exchange rate and a very, very large domestic private sector debt overhang, it isn't clear that Spain is going to be able to generate the kind of nominal GDP growth that it needs over the next few years to be able to ensure that its budget deficit is brought down into a, a sort of 3% target range that makes the debt sustainable. So even by 2013, mm. you're not guaranteed that you won't have contagion risk. So what are you focusing on right now in this environment within corporate Credit. I know that that's you know that that's what you tend to invest in short dated high yield. That's still performing well. Well, certainly we've been continuing to to overweight high yield, and we've been recommending a, a shift into shorter weighted, uh, shorter dated assets. Now that's that's slightly backing up since the the uh, German bonds have started to flatten over the far, past mm. month after the ECB's um, rate hike. Now, it's not clear the extent to which that flattening is a result of flight to quality out of the, the stressed sovereign states and back into Germany, or the extent to which investors are worried that the rate hike is now going to undermine growth and undermine the necessity for future rate hikes. Um, but I guess taking the, the Eurozone crisis and, and putting it into a, a Eurozone corporate mm. context, it's also not entirely clear the extent to which Eurozone corporates are suffering from this. Clearly, any time there's a sell-off in the sovereigns, there's a, a risk off trade, then people sell out of the sovereigns. But to some extent, the corporates aren't doing terribly badly. Clearly, the banks are suffering. They're finding there's it still difficult demand to find out them. themselves. Well, th there's, there's clearly less demand because of the sovereign crisis. But there's, there's still some fundamental value in the companies. Really good. I'm glad you threw that final point in. Great to get um, your analysis on that. Thank you so much, David Watts, European Credit Strategist, Credit Sites.